So you want to drive the auto shift? Well, that's why we're here. Over the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at the components you'll be using, proper startup, selecting a starting gear, normal driving operations, and proper shutdown procedures. We'll also answer some of the most frequently asked questions we receive at the end of this program. And what we don't cover in this video, you'll find detailed in your driver's instruction manual. In fact, we recommend you read through the manual before you drive the auto shift, just to be sure you're thoroughly familiar with what you've got working for you. So, let's get started. Now, there are two key auto shift components in the cab. The gear display, which will display the gear you're in and the gear you're moving to and a shifter to select different operating modes. Eaton offers two shifters, lever and push button. Regardless of the configuration, the shifter has five operating modes. Reverse, neutral, drive, hold or manual, and low. There are also up and down buttons, which we'll discuss in a few minutes. A service light, which may alert you to the event of potential transmission problems or service needs. Now, different OEMs may provide their own shifters and gear displays, but their functions are the same. If you're not using Eaton design components, just be sure to refer to your vehicle manual for instructions on the location and use of your components. Now, let's take auto shift out on the road. As with any vehicle, be sure to use proper safety procedures. Buckle up and be sure the parking or spring brake is set. You also want to be sure the shifter is in neutral and I'll tell you why that's especially important in a few minutes. Next, depress the clutch and turn the key to the on position. At power up, auto shift will go through a self test. You'll notice that the service light comes on and goes off and the gear display shows a solid N indicating that auto shift has registered that you're in neutral. If the service light remains lit or the gear display shows a dash, auto shift has not registered neutral. We'll go over what to do in that case a little later in this program. Assuming you've achieved normal power up, just start the engine. Then release the clutch pedal. Releasing the clutch pedal lets auto shift register input shaft speed. This is important because if auto shift doesn't register input shaft speed, you won't be able to get into your initial starting gear. Now the process of selecting a starting gear is the same whether you select reverse, drive, hold, or low. First, apply your service brakes, release the parking brake, and take the clutch all the way to the floor. This stops the input shaft so auto shift can get into gear. Then choose your startup mode. The gear display will flash the gear you're going to. If the display is also showing down arrows, it's an indication that the input shaft hasn't slowed down. Continue to depress the clutch pedal until the arrows go off. Once the arrows go off, the gear display may continue to flash, telling you that the gear hasn't fully engaged. Slowly let out on the clutch pedal until the number is solid. If you selected drive or hold, you'll be able to select different starting gears using the up and down buttons, depending on how your vehicle is programmed. If the display flashes the gear you want, again, let the clutch out a little until the gear display is solid with that gear. Now it's important to choose a starting gear that's appropriate for the load and grade conditions. In other words, the starting gear should be the same as the gear you'd choose using a manual transmission. Auto Shift will remember and continue to use that starting gear in drive or hold unless you choose another starting gear or until you shut down the unit. All right, when your gear display is solid with the gear you want, slowly release the clutch and you're ready to go. If you selected drive, auto shift will automatically upshift or downshift without using the clutch. During the shifts, the gear display will flash the gear you're going to, and when you're in gear, it will become solid with the new gear. One note, in drive, Auto Shift will adapt to the changing conditions of the vehicle. But right after power up or after changing loads, Auto Shift needs to learn the new conditions. 
While learning, it may hold a gear instead of upshifting. Simply push the up button to start the upshift. It may take three or four shifts for auto shift to learn the new conditions. After that, it'll handle upshifts and downshifts automatically. Also, when coasting to a stop in the lower gears, auto shift won't finish downshifting until the driver gets back on the throttle. This is normal for the auto shift. Now, let's take a look at hold or manual mode. When hold is selected, whether you're moving or not, auto shift doesn't shift under normal conditions unless you use the up and down buttons on the shifter. In other words, as you accelerate and decelerate, press the up or down button to request a shift. If a shift can't be completed due to engine RPM and road speed, the shifter will signal a tone telling you that it can't shift. Just like hold, low mode can be selected at any speed or at a stop. If you selected low from a stop, it'll engage and maintain first gear. Selecting low while moving, say driving down long grades or when coming to a stop, will optimize engine braking by initiating downshifts at higher RPMs and under normal conditions inhibiting upshifts. Now let's recap all of this. Remember that any of your modes, drive, hold or low, can be selected at any speed or from a stop. So if you started out in low and wanted to upshift, simply select hold and use the buttons to shift. Or select drive and let auto shift shift automatically. If you're in drive and want to take over the shifting, simply select hold and use the buttons to shift. Let's move on to reverse mode. When using reverse, first remember to select the proper reverse gear for your load and conditions. Some models have multiple reverse gears, so we suggest you refer to your driver's manual for information on the number of reverse gears available for your transmission model. You should also keep in mind that in order to engage a reverse gear, you should be at a stop or moving at less than two miles per hour. Selecting reverse from neutral will engage low reverse. The gear display will flash the gear you are going to. If the display is also showing down arrows, it's an indication that the input shaft hasn't slowed down. Continue to depress the clutch pedal until the arrows go off. When they do, the gear display may continue to flash, telling you that the gear hasn't fully engaged. Slowly let out on the clutch pedal until the R is solid. Then use your up and down buttons to engage your other reverse gears. If the display flashes the gear you want, Slowly let out on the clutch to fully engage the gear. Remember, we've indicated that auto shift only requires you to use the clutch at startup, when selecting your starting gear, and when stopping. So, when stopping the vehicle, regardless of your driving mode, depress the clutch as you come to a stop. If you're shutting down, select neutral. Release the clutch when the display is a solid end. Again, be sure this is a solid neutral. Then set the parking brake. One note, after the key is turned off, you may hear the transmission make shifting noises for about 20 seconds. This is normal for the auto shift. That's it. That's all you need to know to drive the auto shift. If you still have questions, as we've said, there's a short question and answer segment at the end of this program. We recommend that you watch the Q&A segment and that you read your driver instruction manual before driving the auto shift. Not only will it give you useful tips, but it will walk you step by step through each of the procedures we've discussed here, as well as a number of others, including basic maintenance, troubleshooting, PTO operation, and diagnostics. As always, if you need more information, contact your Eaton Road Ranger service network at one 800 826 Help. Road Ranger. More time on the road.